Hi everybody, and welcome to this dose of Dr. E and Dr. P. So the title of this is kind of on your A1C, how low should you go? And Steve, why are we talking about this? Yeah, we're talking about this because we get a lot of folks around the United States and the world talk about where their A1C should be, and they're really upset because they were 6.2, and the lab said normal is less than 5.7, had a big red mark on it, and there are people out there that don't want to get complications. I don't blame you. Uh, and it's not the lower, the better. Mm -hmm. And I think that's key. So I think, let me ask you, what is the data behind why the American Diabetes Association, all the diabetes organizations say less than eight, less than 7% is the goal? Yeah, so you know we didn't pull this 7% kind of out of a hat out of nowhere. So the data in these long-term... Um, diabetes studies, and, and let's back up for a second. What, why do we care about blood sugars? Why do we want our A1C low? Well, it's to avoid the complications of diabetes, right? So when we've done the research, and we've shown that if you keep your A1C less than seven, your risk of complications is extremely low. And what's important about that is they actually can look at what your, your odds of getting, let's say, eye disease are if your A1C is 10 versus nine versus eight huge improvements going from 10, 9, 8. And then as soon as you get to 7, it just levels off, meaning that there's no additional benefit of going from 7 to 6, certainly to 5, but there is a risk. And what's the risk? Hypoglycemia. Mm -hmm. and, and in the olden days, before continuous glucose monitoring, uh, when they did these large studies, there were some serious adverse events, including death. Mm -hmm. Sorry to be so... Yeah, well, that's, that, the, that's, <laughs> that's, that's the case, is that, again, your risk of complications, like no benefit from going lower, but the risk of hypoglycemia goes way up. And we, we tell people all the time, if, if your A1C is 6.26, 5.9, with no hypoglycemia, truly none, more power to you. And mm -hmm. if you have type 2 and your, your diagnosis has only been around a couple years, you're on metformin and maybe something else, you can get your A1C totally normal mm -hmm. in the non-diabetic range, no danger. But if you're on insulin, it can be dangerous. Yeah. So the bottom line is if you're less than 7%, you're doing a very good job and we're not going easy on you, you know, saying like, oh, 6.8 is okay because you're diabetic. No, that's a place to keep you safe and keep you healthy for a long time. Now, the patients that concern us by far the most that we see all the time are patients, they, they tend to be type 1, um, they're on insulin, their A1C is 5.8, but they're just hypoglycemic all the time. And they have in their mind, that's where they need to be to avoid you know, long-term complications. But these are the patients that I see that have had seizures from lows, they've had car accidents, they need glucagon. They terrify me um, because of these lows, and it doesn't seem to get through to these patients, and I'm not trying to you know, bag on these people, but that, you know, yeah. in the effort to try to avoid long-term complications, they're making them at a high risk for something to happen today or tomorrow. And part of the problem is, um, in the olden days, before we, we only had A1C, mm -hmm. you had an A1C of 5.9, a doctor would say, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of are responsible, we as physicians. And the patient I wrote about in our last newsletter, she was a 70-year-old woman, and she never could break away from the fact that she wants to keep her blood sugar super low. And she uses a CGM, her time in range is great. Her time below range, 10%. Mm -hmm. She's below 70, two and a half hours a day, and below 55, 90 minutes a day. And she tells me, I feel normal, I could golf, uh, you know, but her husband told me a different story. Yeah, so you're right, and we're also, you know, responsible. I remember when I was diagnosed, and you too, they said, you know, if you don't control your blood sugars, you're going to go blind, your kidneys are going to fail. They did a really good job of, of scaring the crap out of us yeah. to like, you know, an unreasonable degree. So the point again is if you have your A1C, you know, less than seven, the odds are you're going to live a long um, life. And I tell people you're going to die because you get hit by a bus. You know, it's something. Oh, not, that makes me feel really yeah, it good. Yeah, feels good. You people, won't feel a thing. People don't know how to feel about that. But the point is, something else is going to get you. And isn't that what we should all hope for? With you know, living with diabetes, yeah. is that we get hit by a bus. I want to die on <clears throat> something unrelated to diabetes. Mm -hmm. the last thing I'll say with this topic is, when you look at your laboratory values, now that you can see your your results, you might 
have an A1C of 6.3, and then the thing says, alert, red blinking light, if you can do it on a sheet of paper, you know, high. Yeah, that is high if you don't have diabetes. So when these, when you look at the normal levels, they should have what your normal should be if you don't have diabetes, mm -hmm. and what is your goal if you do have diabetes. Right. They, and it's just not there. So. It's been 7% for a long time. It's still 7% today. If you're there, congratulations. Congratulate yourself. If you're not, you know, any improvement towards 7% is right. still meaningful. It's not you're either good or bad. Any way along that line is helpful. So I think with this, we should hop on our bus and just go hit some people with diabetes. <laughs> That's not funny. <laughs> yeah. All right. Take care, everybody. <laughs>